Hello and welcome to another exciting breakfast with Unity. I'm your host Max Moreau and today we're going to be doing some AI stuff, some very basic AI stuff. Um, so on our last episode we made this little remote control robot guy, the little Roomba dude, and you can press forward, you, you, it's WASD controls and you can press W to go forward, S to go back, and then you can rotate left and right using A and D. And, um, and I thought this was a pretty good opportunity to show how to do a simple AI by basically replacing input with an AI input. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this scene. I'm going to put it in our AI robot thing and we're going to call this AI robot. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the uh, script as well. We're just going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it AI robot. So let's go to our AI robot scene, and first order of business, before I forget, I'm going to remove the remote control robot script on here, and I'm going to switch it with the AI robot script. And, um, and it let me do that, thankfully, even though it says there's already a definition for remote control robot. So, whoops, I, that's the problem. I wanted to put AI robot, and this actually won't work, probably. No? Oh. Oh, yeah, it's because it's still called that. So let's actually go to our AI robot and call it. AI robot save and then let's try putting it on here. We managed to confuse Unity real good, that's interesting. So if we go to AI robot, put it on here now, EA, we have AI robot. So right now it's the exact same script. We just duplicated it so I can move it around. So so first off, before I do anything else, I just wanted to mention something I didn't get to mention before. Um, if you notice, last time when we did the position and our rotation calculation, they're basically exactly the same. Like, like if you ignore the transfer dot forward, um, actually, let's let's put these in the same order just so that it's easier to believe me. So, so this is input times speed times time dot delta time, and this is input times speed times time dot delta time. And why I wanted to mention this is these are actually pretty much exactly the same, but where's this? there's this extra term here, and it's transfer.forward. And this is because we need to know the direction. But this term actually exists here, we just don't need it because it's so trivial, it's the identity in this case. And what I mean by that is we could put 1.0f times this, and it means exactly the same thing as this. And this is really what we're doing. This transfer.forward is a 1.0. It's a normalized vector. So it's, it has identity properties, but it also has direction. So it gives you the direction information there, and that's why we need it, versus in this case where we don't need it because this is exactly the same multiplying by 1.0 as it is if we don't multiply by 1.0. So I just wanted to point that out. I just think that's kind of cool. Um, one is my favorite number, by the way, um, because mathematically it's just so powerful and interesting. The identity um, uh, features of mathematics are my favorite features. So, um, so that was a geeky thing to say, but okay, whatever. Um, so all we need to do here to make an AI is we need to give it some, um, some input instead of what we've got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about forward, backward, move it. We're just going to actually make, make it so he goes at a set speed. So he's just going to move forward, but then we want, we do want him to move. We do want him to rotate some. And so we're going to first just do a really simple way of doing this that's not going to look very good. What we're going to do is, um, so input.getAxis is a range from negative 1 to 1. So we could just do random.range instead from negative 1.0f to 1.0f. And if we save this, what we will get is typically called, this would be called Brownian rotation, not Brownian movement. But you get this thing that's kind of, um, let's go to the robot. So he kind of goes a lot in a straight line. You can see he's kind of jittering a little bit. He will eventually curve around, but it's, it's very slow because um, all of his movements basically average to zero. And they average to zero very quickly because they're random within that range. It's just, it's just in, in theory, they should, it should be, uh, uniformly spread and stuff, but you're, you're going to have some m movement and stuff because random's not perfect, and, and actually, true random's not perfect either. That's really hard to explain. Um, but, um, so, this doesn't look very good. So, what I'm going to do instead is, let's do something a little bit fancier. What we're going to do is, we're going to do mathf 
dot Perlin noise. Now we've used Perlin noise a couple times on the show. Um, and what it does is it creates values that are near each other. So if you choose, so, so you have to give it a, a number here in Perlin noise. And the, you have to give it two numbers, actually, an X and a Y. And this is two-dimensional Perlin noise, and it point, chooses a point on the, on the graph. Uh, I'm just going to open up uh, Neo Texture Edit real quick to show something. So Perlin noise, what it generates is basically clouds. So if we create a pattern cell, no, pattern Perlin noise, there we go. So Perlin noise, I'm going to also make it so that, so it basically generates these like clouds. So it smoothly transitions. So if you think of the black as zero and the white as one, um, it goes zero, a little bit closer to one, back down to zero, a little bit closer to one, going up to one. And it, it just kind of does that across. So if you just read across, you get this nice gradient um, that has, uh, has different values to it. So we're going to just uh, use that. And so the way we're going to do that is we need two values here. I'm going to just set Y to zero. We don't care about it right now. We are actually going to use it for something in a moment, but uh, for right now, we don't care about it. And for the X value, I'm going to create a time variable. We're going to do T plus, uh, I'm going to go private float T equals 0, 0.0 F. And we're going to make it so T plus equals time dot delta time. Yay. So if we do that, save, and then we put T in here as the X value, save, um, we should get a much better result for our robot AI. Well, actually, it's not going to be much better yet. So, so now he has a tendency to move right. He's doing that a lot. And the reason for this is, like I said when I was showing on the graphic, um, it's between 0 and 1. Perlin noise doesn't give you between negative 1 and 1. It gives you between 0 and 1. It's very easy to convert that, though. All we're going to do is we're going to take the Perlin noise value here, and we're going to... So we're going to need something between 0 and 1, right? We're going to subtract 0.5f. So now we have something between negative 0.5 and 0.5. And then we're going to multiply this whole thing. We want to make sure the subtraction happens first. Times 2.0f. So now this is this term is a range between um, negative one and one. So if we hit play, now we should get a robot AI that we like. Um, so if we go into the scene now, you can see that he smoothly curves. Um, it looks like he's thinking about what he's going to be doing. It, it 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 feels more intelligent. Like it feels like more like it's doing something. Like it's actually doing the the input stuff. I'm going to make the rotation speed faster. Let's make it 360 so he can move around a lot. And um and now you can see that he kind of like goes forward a little bit, turns. It it feels like a thing now as opposed to it feels. It's amazing how much intelligence is imparted by just a little bit of of good motion. So um. I want to do a couple more things here with our, our, our little robot here. So if you go to the game view, you're going to notice we can't even see him. And it's because he already moved away. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually put it at 360 and just see how quickly he gets off the screen. He, he's going to get off the screen pretty quick. Um, he's going to cruise around, but it'll be pretty fast before he's just like out of here. So what I want to do is I want to make him so that he will bump around an area. And... Um, we're going to uh, mangle the physics system a little bit to do this. So what I, what I want to do is if we create a cube and we go to here and make the cube, I'm just going to rotate it kind of a random direction here and extend it out. So if we hit play, what I'd like him to do is if he hits a wall, kind of reflect off of that wall. And um, and the way I'm going to accomplish this is, um, is going to require us to get collision information, but I don't really want to run this robot as a physics system. So, so what we're going to do is, in order to get collisions, you need to have a rigid body and it needs to be non-kinematic. So we're going to create a physics rigid body and we're not going to set it to kinematic, and we're going to turn off use gravity. So the problem with this is if we hit play right now, he will actually collide with the wall, but it'll impart force to him, and then he'll start functioning very strangely once he gets off of that wall. So, so if we go to the robot now, I guess he's not functioning as strangely as I thought he would be. Oh, he is. So you can see he's kind of curving off into space here. 
Um, he has velocities that are being attached to him separate of what we're doing to him because when he bumped, it imparted a force to him which changed his inherent velocity. And so now that calculation is messing with our other calculations. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically have him ignore the forces. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do on trigger enter. And I'm going to do the same on exit as well, just in case. Might be more than we need, but I usually do this when I'm trying to break the physics system. Rigid body dot velocity equals 0, 0.0f. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Rigid body velocity equals 0, 0.0f. And actually, I want this to be on collision. Collision enter. And on collision enter. So this will get rid of the little problems that we've introduced by having our character have a rigid body. We're basically ignoring the rigid body velocity. And actually, we should do the same for angular velocity. Rigid body dot angular velocity equals 0 0.0f. Actually, angular velocity is probably... Oh, yeah, we can't do that on either of these. They're both vectors, so we need to do vector 3.0 instead of 0.0f. This is the vector equivalent of zero. This is a vector with all zeros for the components. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. Boom, and angular velocity. So this will get rid of those little effects. Now, the reason I want, want this collision information though is we can do collision, collision here, and we can get some information out of it. And what I wanna get is the normal of impact. So when we impact against this, I wanna get the normal so the normal will be basically, uh, if it hits this side, it'll be pointing out from the side here. And we want to use that to reflect this thing's course. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to do um, transform.forward. Now, we haven't done this very much, but you can set transform.forward. And it will rotate the object so that that forward is facing. Um, it doesn't give you much control over where the uh, up transform goes in this case. It tries to keep it in a relatively similar situ situation. In our case, we're not really rotating along. Uh, we're, not, we're not doing any rolling. So that's not going to matter. So we're going to do transform.forward. Uh, transform.forward equals. And what we're going to do is um, vector3.reflect. And we're going to take our indirection in normal. So our indirection is transform.forward. And the in normal is going to be collision dot contacts. And we're just going to care about the first contact that we come across. Um, and dot normal. So that's the normal of the collision point. So if we hit plane now, and this guy actually decides to bump into this wall, which he should. You can see that he reflected nicely. Oh, that, that looked good. So now let's have a little bit more fun. Um, we're going to... I'm just going to uh, make kind of a little pen for this guy. I don't really care too much about the... the I'm trying not to be OCD. Uh, duplicate again, and yeah, so if we go to the game, eh, I don't really like how that came out. Let's, uh, let's at least move it a little bit. All right, there we go. So um, now if we hit play, this guy will bounce around. So everything's always better with a friend, right? So let's just create some duplicates of our robot, because I want to do a couple more things real quick. So I'm going to... Make duplicates of the robot, and I'm going to move them off so that they're not colliding off right off the start. Oops, not why. Don't want to move them off axis. All right, so we're gonna hit play. And first thing you'll note is these guys are all working exactly the same. These guys are getting the same inputs. The other thing are, you'll notice is some of them got out. And the reason they got out is when they started hitting each other, they have these capsule colliders. So they can get normals that are not in this plane, which means this is a problem. It's actually kind of cool that they can get out and, you know, life finds a way and all that. But let's 
fix that right now. So um, the way we can do this is we can project this normal into the plane that we want so that we don't have any of that vertical component ever, even if, even if it wants to have it. So the way you can do that is uh, vector3 dot project on plane. And this takes a vector, so this is the one we're going to change, the normal here, and the plane normal. The plane normal is, um, you can define a plane by just uh, the, um, the direction that, uh, that the plane is. Uh, so, so basically, this is just going to be transform, actually, sorry, vector 3.up. We could also use transform.up, like lowercase transform.up, but the problem with that is it's relative to the object, so if it does somehow get rotation information in it that's not supposed to have, it will mess up our up. So I'm going to use the universal up right now. This is vector 3 up. It will always point up in the world. So if we hit play now, these guys will no longer have the problem where they're bouncing out of the levels. Yay. But they still have the same um, movement. So the way we can do fix that is, um, as I showed in our little graphic example, which I closed, um, this is two-dimensional Perlin noise. So we, I'm just going to pick a different row for each guy. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to have a little private variable, private uh, float uh, Perlin offset. And then in start, I'm just going to set Perlin offset... Um, equals random dot range and we'll use negative 1000.0f and positive 1000.0f. Uh, we could make it like max int or max float or, or whatever or min float um, but the problem with that is if it becomes a really really high level value or really really low value um, you'll have less precision so if we keep it in the in, the, with, in this 2000 range it'll be fine. So we hit play now Oh, wait, we're not quite done. They're still going to be the same because we didn't actually use our offset anymore. We just are going to use this offset inside here instead of the 0.0f that we had for y before. So we're just going to put the Perlin offset there, save, and then all these guys should function independently. Yay, they function independently. That's awesome. So that's, um, that's some AI fun and uh, some bonus collision stuff. So... Let's go ahead and save scene, save project. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. That's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Uh, please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. I've been noticing a lot, a lot more people are helping. I really appreciate it. Like, seriously, this, this is huge. You guys are awesome, and you get access to the Cooking With Unity Super Repo that has a bunch of junk in it. And I'm going to try and put more cool junk in it as time progresses. I'm sorry I haven't done had a lot of time for it because of life stuff. So, you guys have a great one. And I'll catch you tonight with more Scape.